Welcome back, everybody, to the continuation of our recap of Pyanodont on Twitch.tv. So, we have expanded the starter base a little bit more. The initial plate machines that we have made over here are now actually being fed down here into something one could consider a small little mall. As you can see over here, we are making some small parts over here. Uh, small parts are made quite easily out of sticks, gears, bolts. Wait a minute. This machine has never worked. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, the sticks need to be over here, and the gears need to be over there. And actually, the sticks need to be over there, and the bolts need to be over there. What the hell? <laughs> Good thing I've noticed that right now, just after the stream when I'm doing the recap. Perfect. Uh, we'll keep it that way. Um, but yes, we're making some small parts over here. We're making some air core inductors over there. Uh, and then we make some more stuff over here. Uh, we also make some pipe, some belt, some underground, some inserters. And of course, we do make the basic science pack. And you know what's pretty bloody amazing over here? This magnificent belt over here of um, flowers. It's just flowers on the belt. There's a belt underneath there. You can't even see that belt. And if you follow this flower belt all the way to where it comes from, it looks even more amazing because this belt just comes straight out of this flower bed over there. And you don't even really see the miners over here, mostly because they're currently not really operating because they're all st uh, stand still. But this this is one of the reasons why I really do enjoy Pyanodons, like just seeing something magnificent like this. Good. You can also see that we have made something like a car over here and we have been exploring a bit. The current plan for us to do is to make some glass because we do want to automate the production of locks. And to automate the production of locks, where are these things? I think they're over here. We need to make a fast wood forestry. Now, the fast wood forestry alone does not require glass, but the botanical nursery over here does require glass. And to make a botanical nursery, well, we need glass. And to make glass, we need quartz. And to make quartz, well, we have to find quartz. And so we have been exploring a bit <laughs> as you can see there are definitely biters on the map the biter settings are not too extreme these are only small nests main reason i need the biters to be there to constrain me but not the biters to be there to completely obliterate me so i do play pyanod onto biters because um if you have biters on your outskirts your base definitely gets built more different than you don't when you play on peaceful and i just like having biters around also this over here this is not biters. This is geothermal water, which I think we either need for the geothermal power plant or maybe for something else. I'm not quite sure yet what we need it for, but we'll figure that out soon. Good. But yeah, the plan is um, the big plan. The big, big, big grand plan is for us to make circuits. And to make circuits, let's have a quick look at that. Um, they are over here. Uh, there they are. Craft. To make circuits, we need to make copper, zinc, batteries, ceramic capacitors, air core inductors, high power resistors, printed circuit substrate tier 1, vacuum tubes, and solder. Now, the copper, zinc batteries, of course, need copper and zinc. Duh. <laughs> and copper we have, but zinc we do not have yet. Then, the ceramic capacitors over here, they require tin and ceramics. Ceramics are made out of clay. Clay we can get from anywhere on the ground. And coke, well, we'll come to that soon. Um, then high power uh, resistors is also more coke, more glass and tin. Air core inductors is the thing we can already make, so we don't really need to take a look at that. Um, the printed circuit substrate over here is more wood, sap, and formaldehyde. Formaldehyde we get from uh, methane, and methane we get from moondrop seeds. Moondrops are going to be fun soon, but that is still far, far, far in the future. And then, of course, vacuum tubes, which is just a bunch of stuff you already know how to do. Good. So, uh, we need to figure out where things are like tin. Now, tin we have over here. We've got a big tin field over here. 1.5 million. It's not too far away from the base. We can get to that soon. I will also show you this thing soon. Um, this episode. Then, we got some zinc over here, which is mighty fine. We got some more copper over here, if we need more copper. Borax is definitely something we're going to need either way. Uh, we do have some biters over here we have to deal with, but that will be fine. Uh, as for the quartz... Uh, if we go further this way, the next quartz field is all the way over here. Actually, uh, might be better than the other one, now that I look at it, because it is not too far away. There's also this quartz field over here, but that is fine, and there's also one all the way over there. However, we were kind of looking at this quartz field over here, because there's also a lead ore field next to it, as well as a zinc ore field. 
and niobium we're also going to need at some point in time and if we really need it there's also some tin down here and i'm kind of thinking of maybe making something similar to an outpost over here if you're wondering why on our map um these ore fields over here are um are revealed that is a mod setting in rso if we go over here into mod settings and you go all the way to rso resource spawner overall you can set it that it reveals spawned ores which i usually do um not because um well it, it speeds up it speeds up the exploration quite a bit i mean i could just go around and try to find these fields for myself but to be perfectly honest I would rather just have these be shown to me because we're going to find them either way. Good. But yes, that is the big plan. Uh, but the first plan is for us to make glass so that we can make wood. Now, why do we want to make wood? Well, for one, we need it for crafting. We need it for treated wood. We need it for, um, for our science packs over here. So we do need to make a lot of wood. And of course, we also need it to make coal gas. In my opinion, this is one of the best recipes in the game. You take some random bits of wood. You can turn that straight into coal. Iron oxide, coal gas, and tar. The coal over here, you can turn that straight into coke, which is even better. More coal gas and more tar. And the tar over here, we can crack that. The tar over here can be steam cracked into middle oil, creosote. Did my, just wait a minute. Um, there we go. A little bit less, please. There we go. Um... Yes, here we go again. So the tar can be cracked into middle oil, creosote, and tracine oil, and pitch. The middle oil can be cracked into light oil, carbolic oil, and naphthalene oil. Uh, the light oil, we can... Well, this recipe doesn't exist. The light oil, we turn into... Well, let me just show this thing. So we came up with this thing. This thing is our tar cracker. And this is more or less the reason why I absolutely love pyanodons. Because you make big things like this, where you just go like, what the hell did we just make over here? Why is it so big? Why is it called Ragamuffin? Why is it not called Ragamuffin? Why are you not called Ragamuffin? Ragamuffin is amazing. There we go. Good. But yes, we got our tar crackers over here. And you can already see that pitch over here is backing up. Uh, and the pitch part is pretty much the pitch of it all. Because the pitch we can use to make something like coke out of it. And oh boy, can we make a lot of coke out of pitch. So cracking up the tar over here is a very good early source for coke. Um, you might notice that we have a couple of inserters over here. It's exactly 10, to be perfectly exact. Each one of these inserters has a uh, rotation speed of 0 0.6 items per second. So we need 10 of these to transfer 6 items per second. Why 6 items per second? Well, this machine over here makes 30 coke every 5. That is 6 items per second. So we do need a couple of these over here just to get this machine emptied out over here. And two of these uh, fill up uh, a belt, and then one of these uh, fills up a half belt. So this makes six, that makes 12, and you make three, that makes 15. So these three together make a full yellow belt, and these three together make also a full yellow belt. That's why it looks a bit wibbly-wobbly over here. And that's pretty good. And all that coke over here goes over here into making steam. Now, uh, steam, they did tune down. The amount of steam that you need, but oh boy, did they also kind of tune down the amount of steam these machines over here make. Uh, these boilers over here, they make uh, 7.5 steam per second. So to supply, for example, all of these coke machines with steam, every coke machine requires 20 steam per second. We got six of them, that's 120. Uh, that means we need um, about 16 of these to make the steam that we need to crack the coke, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the pitch over here, into coke. Which is fine. Uh, if you calculate this true and true, you will notice that the amount of coke you make to make the coke over here um, exceeds the amount of coke you need to make the steam to make this machine over here run. So you do gain coke by doing this. And... Uh, that's also kind of the reason why we added a little power plant over here. If this machine over here would be running full pull all the time, there would be no coke going past this point over here. But currently, things are kind of backed up and things are kind of slow, which is perfectly fine because we don't really need any everything to go full speed at all time. But it does mean that we now do have something like a bit more of a permanent power plant, even though it's only four steam engines. Um, it is kind of enough at the moment. This works. This does the trick. I mean, these four steam engines over here, they do make up to 14 megawatts of power, which will... Actually, 14.6 to be exact. Uh, which will keep us going for a while. 
good of course we also need to take care of the ash of these machines and i'm kind of curious to see why the ash over here is completely backed up we'll probably check that out soon um but yes uh one thing i'm kind of sad about is of all the products that we make in here the anthracene oil we can't really use for anything yet i'm a little bit disappointed by that because i kind of want to not waste stuff we could put it into a tank but it will fill up quite fast because we make actually quite a lot of this anthracene oil look at that we make 75 over here per machine um that is about um yeah wait what is that 10 15 per second per machine that's 60 per second per machine um these we would have so many of these filled up with anthracene that we can't um that we can't use for any time soon so sadly we have to avoid that i'm i'm not really happy avoiding stuff i hate doing that because it feels for me like i'm wasting resources but we're also making anthracene oil over here by the way um but there is no recipe there's no simple recipe to use this for yeah it, it would be lovely if there would maybe just be something to burn it into steam or something like that but the first recipe we get which where we can use it is over here where we can turn it into carbon black and that is later on for rubber production, uh, which will be fine. Uh, but we still need to, well, we need to take our way through here quite a bit. It is in the next tech level, so we are going to get it soon. But getting there is going to be a little bit like, oof, it's going to take a while to get there. Good, but what else does this machine make over here? So like I said, we cracked the, uh, we cracked the tar over here into pitch, into middle oil and creosote. Creosote is a thing that we're going to need quite a lot for things like where is it where is it where is it creosote um there it is usage treated wood is one of the main things we're going to need creosote for uh we're also going to need it for some of the later products which we do not have any access to right now um but the big product number one at the moment is going to be treated wood treated wood is going to be what we need for the wooden fence of course um but treated wood is the thing that we need to make actual small power poles uh, we can make small power poles in the pocket but they do require a full lock and treated wood is just way better for them um there we go then also for the blades i think this is for rotors which is then for yeah this then goes into pi alternative energy where we then can make some wind power i'm looking forward to this one uh, but we do need to make a whole bunch of stuff over here, which I've never seen before, which I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, we, no, wait, this one, uh, treated wood, yes. Uh, and the other big one is going to be fiber boards. Uh, treated wood is very much required to make fiber boards, and fiber boards we're going to be needing quite a lot in the future. Also, we need, as I said, for Formica, which we do need for circuits. Good! um so what can we do with the middle oil now the middle oil is going to be cracked over here at the top yep oh things are moving that's always scary things are moving um yes middle oil over here can be cracked again into light oil and carbolic oil as well as naphthalene oil uh the carbolic oil uh goes all the way over here and is turned into even more creosote the naphthalene ore is going over here where it's turned into even more creosote and the light oil goes over here and the light oil is getting turned into aromatics and gasoline now the last part the gasoline is going to be very important we need the aromatics uh to mine zinc um can we see that over here let's have a look mm, no, it's not over here it's not over there it's over here zinc 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 uh usage mm. Is it in here? Yeah, there we go. So if you want to mine up zinc ore out of a mine, we do need to feed that miner aromatics. And I hope it's not 40 aromatics per zinc ore. If it is, oof. <laughs> I think it's less than that. But if it actually is this amount of aromatics we need to put in per zinc ore, then this machine over here is definitely not going to be enough. Um, which will mean that we do maybe need to make a dedicated aromatics making machine soon. But the main reason I wanted to make this was for the gasoline. Um, and we do need gasoline soon. Gasoline, as you can see over here, has a very high fuel value. And that fuel value is very important because this fuel value is what we can use to power liquid powered uh, buildings. For example, the glassworks over here requires liquid power to operate. It has a uh, fuel consumption demand of 10 megawatts which means we have to provide 
liquids worth up to 10 megawatts. And how much that is per second depends on how much energy the liquid has. If you open up your Pi um, uh, wiki over here, you will see this page over here, which basically tells you which liquid has how much burn rate. And something like gasoline over here has 1.2 megajoules of energy. Something like heavy oil, only 0.8. Crude oil, very terrible, less than 100. Diesel, very good, 1.5, one of the best. Maybe even actually the best, because I don't think there's anything in here that has two megajoules of energy or is higher than 1.5. So everything is 1.5, perfect. You do want to run your machines on something like that. In our previous playthrough, we ran our machines mostly on benzene, uh, which is still in, uh, which has a megajoule of energy, which is pretty darn good. Uh, if we're going to do that again in this one, I don't know. But then again, still, this machine over here requires 10 megawatts of energy. So if you would run it, for example, with something like benzene or bitumen over here, you would need 10 benzene per second to make this run. And for gasoline, a little bit less, because this one, of course, has a fuel value of 1.2. Good! Uh, but yeah, that's the whole reason why we're making gasoline over here, because we do need these glass works to make the glass, to make whatever we want to make afterwards. Good, 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 good. Uh, on the side note, we also kind of made a little moss farm over here. Uh, we just made a little moss machine. Do I actually have some cocoa? Me? No, I don't. Uh, just to make some moss so that we can make a bigger moss farm. So this is only like an intermediate build. Nothing really important. It just sits there. Perfect, perfect. Uh, anything else we need to take a look at? Coke is in, that is in, that is in. Ragamuffin is almost in. I'm going to finish that name off right after this recording. No, I think we are fine. Perfect! So, uh, on another note, I did yet, I did decide to upload, or try at least to upload, all the um, Pyanodon's Twitch VODs, the complete VODs, on the VOD channel. If you don't know what the VOD channel is yet, there is another channel on my channels where I just push in all the VODs. I don't really push all the VODs in there because not always, it's it's not always that interesting to put those in there. But uh, it, there seems to be at least a little bit of a demand for the Pyanodon VODs. So I will be pushing those in over there so that you guys can watch them if you want to. Um, the link to that I will be putting into the description. Nevertheless, that will be it for today. Uh, the, we will have at least two Pi streams per week, and the current plan is Mondays and Thursdays, 7 p.m. So if you do want to see me play Pi on Twitch, get over there. If you do want to see this base grow, get over there. If you don't want to see this base grow and want to watch the YouTube um, 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 recaps, also fine. Every bit helps over here. But if you do like what you see, please do leave a like, a follow, a comment, a subscription. Every one of these actions does help me out in growing this channel to something bloody amazing. You can also, of course, find me on twitch.tv slash boltviking, where we do even more Factorio. Obviously, Pyanodons. Uh, we're trying to get Nullius in there somehow. I will not. I will try not to abandon the Nullius playthrough, but <laughs> we also have that started. And we should probably focus on that as well a little bit. And, of course, we also play RimWorld, XCOM, and also Victoria Tree and GTFO. My schedule is so full. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, thank you so much for today. And without further ado, I wish you all an amazing evening. And until next time, see you around!